Hey, welcome to Adobe Premiere. Let's get started. When you open up a new project, uh, I'm just going to use the standard widescreen. Uh, if you filmed everything on a DSLR, you can change it according to the settings, but I'm just going to do it widescreen because that's what uh, YouTube uses, which is what we're going to be preparing it for, or Vimeo. Uh, sequence name, uh, I want to call this documentary. Hit OK. And I'm going to use the same uh, standard features we have. Okay, so what we're going to do is in your media browser uh, right here, uh, you're going to go and find your footage. And then once you find your footage, you're going to drag the footage that you want to use into our bin. So this is like the bin or the events library in iMovie. Um, now, it's really important that you organize your footage well. Um, I, we put everything in our Dropbox so that way our project is you can uh, edit your project wherever you want because it doesn't have to stay on just one computer, unlike iMovie. So, we, like I've organized it really well. I have my B-roll and then my interview of my documentary. And this is in my Dropbox in a documentary folder. Now, it's really important too, I'm, I'm looking for what interview shots to put in here. If you know you're not going to use certain clips, don't put it in this footage. Put it like a do not use folder so it keep things organized. Uh, so that way, when you look into this um, B-roll, you know exactly which clips you want to use. Now, with your footage, if you get these red screens of death, that means that your footage uh, cannot be found. That means either the file is missing, the name got changed, something online is not working. Maybe if it's in your Dropbox, that that's not working. So it's really important that with your files that, first of all, you don't change uh, the names uh, once they're inserted or you don't move the files somewhere else into another location. Now, if this happens, it's not the end of the world unless the file is gone. Um, but let's see if we can find the file. So you're going to see here it says interview. Uh, what you're going to do here is control click on that missing interview clip in your bin. And you're going to hit replace footage. And then you're going to go find that footage uh, that you're missing. So let's say it's this one. I hit open. So um, I'm going to use uh, this one. And again, uh, I'm just going to click and drag it into my events library right here. And these are just your um, projects. So right here I have documentary. You can actually work on more than one at a time. Like I can hit Command N and create a, another project. And you see it's right here, sequence three, sequence two. So you could be making like. Uh, a couple pro movie projects at the same time and working on them and going in between each other. So it's another beauty of uh, Premiere. So I just put in this footage right here. Now it's really important um, uh, and also if you want to organize it you can click here and then go to like edit and then label and if you want to change label so it's green so all my interview clips are green that's easy to see and I can also hold down shift key and highlight a bunch and do that as well. But what I can do is I can just click here. If I double click, it'll open up into the preview mode. Now in the preview mode, I can decide where I want to start and finish. So um, right here, I'm going to go to my interview. Okay, and I'm going to bring in one of my interview clips and import that file. Now what I'm going to do is take double click on this video clip uh, that I have here and I want to see where I want to go in and my out. So if they didn't really start filming yet, I could mark my in right here and I could hit I as an in. That means when I drag it to the timeline, it's going to start there. And then let's say I'm going to go all the way out to here. So then my out is O. So there's my in, there's my out. And then to drop it down, um, all I have to do is hit insert right here. And you see there's a, a shortcut key too, is the comma. Um, you can also use markers if you want to set different markers based on the timeline of you want to like remember certain things uh, that could be convenient as well. Um, it's also if you go to safe margins this is really good because you don't want your subject outside of these margins you kind of want a nice general uh, not a border but a, a margin because uh, you don't want the subject and things too close to this edge okay so make sure that uh, you utilize that tool right there. So um, now I'm in here. Now, uh, if you notice, on the right side here is my project. Notice how it's a little bit smaller. Or, uh, I, sorry, I'll do this. 
Now notice, see how big it is? Now you should not try to resize manually like each clip like that. That'll take too long. Um, you want to fit it inside those uh, video properties that we assigned to it at the beginning. So to do this, what you're going to do is go to your effects tab down here. And in your effects tab, we're going to go to uh, video effects and distort. And we are going to choose... Transform. So click on transform and drag it right in onto that clip. Okay. Now on the top you'll see the effects control tab and here we're going to go into transform and we're going to click on uniform because if I don't, if I just change one, they're going to make it wide or big or whatnot. I'm going to go back to 100 and so uh, what you're going to do here is click on that box so that way if, when I scale it, it's scaled accordingly. So. And let's go 75% so we can see it. So um, decide how much you want to scale. And again, if you need rule of thirds, you can also, with the position, okay, change your position you know, horizontally um, or vertically right here. And so we can get that just how we want to. Uh, for my sizing, and let's say I have a bunch of clips. Like let's say I have another documentary uh, part that I want to insert. So I have that documentary part, and then I want to come in here drag that one in um, and put this file in but you notice this one okay same thing but let's say I want the exact same thing that I just did uh, in resizing that all you gotta do is control click on transform and hit copy and then go in here and click on this one and just hit command V for paste and it automatically adjusts it to exactly the same so this is really helpful if you have a bunch of clips that you want adjusted, okay? Uh, especially for B-roll, if you have like a lot of B-roll clips, you can just adjust the scale, um, or you could even like transport it in and then just type in the number, 75. So um, you don't have to paste it, you could do each separately and just type in these numbers, uh, make sure they're exactly the same, but just make sure your video clips are uniform. And if you use two different cameras with two different sizes, you wanna make sure not to have the same size if it's different sizes. So hopefully that's useful to you as well. Um, so we have our clip here, and let's talk about editing our clip. Um, on the timeline down here, if you hit Command Plus, sorry, just plus, you will zoom in on the timeline and zoom out on the timeline. You should always keep it kind of zoomed in so you can see this footage right here. Uh, for that, if you see on the timeline here on the top, you'll see a bar with a little white um, transparent part and it go, that, that, that's our marker so uh, usually right now make a documentary that's maybe like two and a half minutes three and a half so you might want to drag that marker to about how long you think it's gonna be okay so that way you'll know if you're out of that you're over time or under time if needed uh, if you look at here you see these little squares with a preview of just the beginning um, there's different options of looking at that uh, for your video that you can see you could hit show head to tail and it shows the beginning and the end okay um, I kind of like show frames so then you show see each of those frames as it goes uh, so but if it's all the, all the same you know you could just put show name only if you don't want to see that but your choice um, next let's say you're gonna um, clip some uh, segments out like for example if they say um or ah, uh, so you want to uh, definitely cut that out uh, so what we're going to do here is to cut that out there's a few ways we can do it um, if you if you want to cut it like let's say right about here and like right to here you can just hit uh, command K okay command K I think of if I can't spell right cut you know to cut something but I can't spell so I spell with a K and notice how it cut that clip here and then command K to clip that clip hit V as in Victor and then I can select that clip that I cut um, if you um, if you only have uh, if you have two video files on top of each other so let's say I have um, like two right here you, you can hold down uh, shift command shift K and it'll crop off both at the same time and again you can do the same thing command shift K so that's important if like you have 
two files of the same thing. So let's say you videotaped your subject of the documentary and you had two cameras at the same time and you lined them up on your timeline exactly the same. So on video one, you could have angle one, video two is angle two. And then when you cut things, you just cut them at the same time, command shift K and then V and then you can select those files, hold down shift and then delete. Um, for that. If you want to delete, let's say, just the audio, you could um, see how it selects right here, and it also selects the audio. Uh, if you hold down um, Option, okay, you Option click, you can select only that part. So I can delete just the audio instead. So like I said, that's one way of deleting is using the K shortcut, which is really easy, just K. Uh, another one is the razor tool on the top left you'll see C as in razor or I think of it as cut like I know how to spell now so I hit C and then I can come here and scrub where I want and then I hit C or just click click hit V as in Victor click it and delete now there's um, different ways of deleting it so notice here I delete it but let's say I want to move that back into that empty space if you control click right here, you'll see ripple delete and notice it deleted it and moved everything over. If you're using a keyboard, you can just hit uh, the delete key below the function key. Uh, or if you have a laptop, you can hit uh, shift function delete and it will automatically get rid of that clip and move everything back over there. So it's really uh, helpful so you don't have to like delete and then V and then move it over and hope that you move it over all the way uh, for that function. There's different options in the top left here that you can use uh, for uh, deleting and you always want to make sure you're uh, organized. You can always re resize you know these uh, according to how well you want it. If you hit the tilde key below escape you can actually look at your that window bigger. So if I select here you see that yellow outline and hit the tilde it's a, it zooms in and I'm able to see a little bit better. If I want to look at my footage more, I just click on here, the yellow, and I can see my footage with all those details. And it even says the video sizes of that footage. If I want to view my footage a little bit better, I can do that. I could even go like to fit, and then it's kind of like a nice preview screen, and so on. So there's also different ways of looking at it in your workspace. So you can hit, if you ever, things like look really weird, you can just hit reset current space, or I always use the editing. Uh, part, but you can always change your workspace in that area and even save it uh, for that. So what I was telling you uh, was if I deleted something, but let's say you wanted more or less of something, you can come in here and hit um, a rolling edit tool, okay, N, and basically I can click here and roll in, and basically what that did was, let me zoom in, so this is good if you're, you're doing a music video and it, you lined it up and you, it has to have that amount of time or something. So uh, if you roll this, it'll give you more of this clip and less of this clip, okay? Or this way, more of this clip and less of this clip because assuming that we deleted something, you know, from this side and this side. Uh, of course, you can't do that at the start of the video because you can't really get uh, more of something that's the beginning but uh, I really like uh, that tool. And then, uh, of course, you have the ripple edit tool, or the B. Uh, how that works is you just click here, and you can move it here, and of course, it'll give you more or less of the clip according to what you need. Uh, if you need something in slow motion, so let's say you do a horizontal pan, uh, what you can do here is um, to the clip, you hit, you select the clip, and we're going to select uh, X for rate stretch tool. And then what you can do here is um, if you move it this way, it's going to make it like really fast. So it's going to talk really fast like a chipmunk and you can't understand what they're saying, but they're squeaky voice and so on. Or you can slow it way, way, way down. So that's a way to control the speed. In iMovie, it showed like a turtle or a rabbit of how you can control that speed. So that was really helpful to remember. Uh, so I hope those things helped you. Um, you can always lock things down too. If you don't want to touch certain things, you can hit the lock 
and let's say I'm done with my interview, I don't wanna lock it, or I don't wanna edit it, so I'm gonna lock it. Um, and then I can go ahead and put in like, let's say my B-roll clips uh, that I might have. So here I might wanna go into my B-roll, take a B-roll clip, drag it in there, and then I can drag it in here, and whatever's on top, you're gonna see, okay? Um, you're gonna see whatever's on top, and then you can also edit that down. And then, of course, we don't need audio, so I could just hide um, this audio and not show that audio at all, um, and only have the audio of the interview. So that can definitely help as well. Uh, when you export it out, uh, you're gonna go to File, and then Export and Media, and uh, we're preparing these for the web, so you can choose H.264. And then for the preset, you could choose YouTube or Vimeo, um, according to what size uh, that you want. And uh, usually 720 is fine, okay, or HD. So you can go down here, YouTube widescreen HD is great. Uh, and then you're done.